Hey, what is going on, YouTube? It is your boy Tropical NHL back at it again for our brand new YouTube video. Today, we're going to be talking about the NHL entry draft that's coming in two weeks. It's going to be a lot of fun because this is known to be the best draft since 2015 this is known to be the best draft of the last decade it's going to be a lot of fun watching who's gonna go where watching the prospects head into next season some of them are going to be in the nhl some of them are going to go back in juniors in the ncaa in europe and it's going to be a lot of fun seeing who got the best players in this draft and you know what a couple of weeks before drafts there's always some lists some mock drafts that are coming out some of them are more accurate than others and some of them you're just like what the hell have I just looked at and every year former general manager of the Calgary Flames in 2001 I think it was Frag Button comes out with a top 10 draft list of the draft and he dropped the list yesterday and let's say it's pretty weird Frag Button's list are always in the center of a lot of discussions a lot of talks and a lot of controversy and this year's list is not an exception because there's a ton of hot takes in that list and I'm gonna be honest I don't really understand the list that much. Like, I mean, I know he has the experience. I don't have it. But like at this point, I don't really get it. Every year he comes out with a list. Sometimes he gets some pretty nice predictions. But for the most part, it's just like a bunch of hot takes. Maybe trying to get people to talk about it. Maybe trying to bring discussions around the draft. I have no idea. But yeah, this year's list and that good of a draft is really, really weird in my opinion. And today we're going to take a look at it. I'm going to give you guys my opinion on the list. I mean, my mock draft a couple of days ago i made my top 10 list if you guys want to go watch it it's on the channel it's my post combine nhl mock draft i think i did pretty good i think i did pretty good but yeah today we're going to be looking at cred buttons draft list but before getting into that i invite you guys to subscribe if you haven't already we gained more than 100 subscribers yesterday we are now 150 away from the objective of getting to 4k subscribers before the draft so if you could hit the subscribe button to help me out reach that goal that would be amazing as well as the like button let's try and get 100 likes on this video that would be awesome so yeah here is Craig button's list on an amazing graphic made by tsn we're gonna go pick by pick and see who is number one to 10 on his list. Craig Button updated prospect rankings. It's not really a mock draft. It's more like the top 10 of the best prospects for him. But like I said, there's a ton of hot takes in that top 10. And I strongly doubt that it's going to be looking like that in a couple of years. All right, so obviously he did that correctly. First is Connor Bedard. I mean, you can't say that Connor Bedard is not the first overall pick, the best prospect in this draft. I mean, man, this guy is an absolute stud, best prospect since Connor McDavid in 2015. And he's going to be an absolute superstar franchise, generational talent in the NHL. He's probably going to be around a point per game as soon as next year if he remains healthy. So, yes, having Connor Bedard at number one, it's basically a no brainer for anybody. The second best prospect in this year's draft for Craig Button is with the Anaheim Ducks and it is going to be Adam Fantilli. First freshman to win the Obi Baker Trophy in the NCAA since Jack Eichel in 2014-15. Adam Fantilli had an absolutely amazing season. One of the best players to ever come out of the USHL. He played at the World Championship, won the gold medal, played at the World Juniors, won the gold medal he had an impact on both of those tournaments and he has the potential to be that 80 to 90 point center that has a potential to win a selkie trophy he's good at absolutely everything he does on the ice and having him at the number two spot on the list is pretty fair in my opinion i mean when you look at it bedar at first fantil at second it's basically the new mcdavid eichel like bedar is the best prospect since mcdavid and fantil is the first freshman to win the obi baker since jack eichel so the comparison over in the next couple of years is going to be really interesting to follow the third best prospect and third overall of this draft for craig button is going to be leo carlson with the columbus blue jackets i mean leo carlson is a tall big strong centerman that can play both good offense and good defense he's going to be a similar player to nicholas backstrom and i think he's going to have an impact right away in the nhl a bit like helias peterson a couple of years ago with the vancouver canucks leo carlson is going to fit right in in the columbus blue jackets organization i mean he's the center that they need and he's probably the best european prospect of the last couple of drafts so it's going to be really interesting to follow him and having him at number 
number three is pretty fair in my opinion. Number four, obviously, you kind of have to have him there. Even though he's in a lot of controversies right now, there's no denying his talent. And the guy is Matt Vimishkov. Actually, in the power ranking list, I probably would have him behind Connor Bedar. I think that he's the second best player of this draft behind Connor Bedar. He is 100% a top four player in this draft like he is absolutely amazing I mean back when Russia were still available to play in the tournaments he had better statistics than Connor Bedar in the U18 tournament so there's no denying his talent this guy when he will be coming in the NHL whether it's in 2026 or in 2030 he is going to be a heck of a player and he's probably going to have an impact right away as he will make the jump in the NHL. The only problem is all the controversy with the KHL contract, the situation in Russia and all of that. But there's no denying that Matt Vimishkov is probably the second best player of this draft behind Conor Bedar in terms of talent. All right, this is this is where it starts to get a bit like, yeah, I'm not too sure. Logically, at fifth overall, fifth best player of this draft, you have a guy like Will Smith, for example. Will Smith, who just had one of the best season in the U.S. National Development Program history. He has an amazing offensive ceiling, crazy statistics everywhere he played. And he's most likely going to have an impact in the NHL as soon as he's going to make the jump. Not this season, but this season after. Everybody since the start of the season said that the top five are in a class of their own. But for some reasons, Craig Button has... Axel Sandin Pelica at number five to the Montreal Canadiens. I can definitely do get it. Axel Sandin Pelica has a lot of potential. He is a good player. I mean, he played in the Swedish Hockey League. He got five points in 22 games with adults as a defenseman. In the Swedish Junior Hockey League, he got 36 points in 21 games. He's a really, really talented player and probably one of the best defensemen available in this draft. But like having him in front of guys like Will Smith, Zach Benson... Dvorsky, Ryan Leonard, Oliver Moore, and even David Renbacher is kind of crazy. I mean, in most mock drafts, he is around the 12, 13, 14, 15th overall spot. But having him in the top five, man, at this point is just a pure lack of hockey knowledge. Like, don't get me wrong, he is really, really good. The team that's going to draft him is going to have a heck of a prospect in their system. But to have him in front of guys like Will Smith and Zach Benson, even Ryan Leonard, is crazy, in my opinion. Not the same level of potential and talent at all. Now at number six, obviously, we have Will Smith. Like Will Smith with the Arizona Coyotes. Like there's no way in hell that if Will Smith is available at five that the Montreal Canadiens will not take him. I mean, can't you praise him for three straight days at the scouting combine? And he knows the guy really well. So if Will Smith is somehow still available at five, the Montreal Canadiens are going to take him. But I strongly doubt that he's going to go outside the top four. I mean, this guy has a heck of an amount of talent and he is going to be an impactful player in a couple of years. That cover half lead superstar in the same way as a guy like Trevor Zegras, for example. That is what Will Smith is. And having him outside the top five behind Axel Sand and Pelica is, yeah, that's, that's meh, meh. At the seventh spot on Craig Button's list, we have Edward Sell going to the Philadelphia Flyers. I mean, Edward Sell was pretty high on all the lists at the start of the season, but his skating and defensive game kind of make him slow down in the rankings. I mean, he's a really good player. He's probably going to have an impact on an NHL team. But again, having him in front of Zach Benson, having him in front of Moore, having him in front of Ryan Leonard is kind of crazy again, in my opinion. Opinion. Like Edward Sell is not going to be in the top 10 and Edward Sell is definitely not a top 10 talent in this draft. Like again, I could be wrong, but like having him in front of all the guys that are behind is, yeah, not too sure about it. At the eighth spot, we have Dom Willander. I mean, again, he's a pretty good defenseman. He had a pretty good season in the Swedish Hockey League. Not as good as Sandin Pelika. But to have him as a defenseman, even in front of David Rimbacher, who has a ton more potential, in my opinion, is crazy. But to have him in front of Lennart, in front of Benson, and in front of Oliver Moore, man, is just not understandable. Even Dalibor Dvorsky should be in front of Tom Willander. I think it's pretty fair to say that Craig Buttons loves his European prospects. Uh, man, at this point, it's just it's just ridiculous. Like, come on. The top four was pretty good, but since the fifth overall, we're getting into a really, really dark place. 
At the ninth spot, we have Dolibor Dvorsky. I mean, this one's pretty fair. He should be around that spot in the draft. In terms of potential, I think he's around that spot again. But again, I would definitely have Ryan Leonard and Zach Benson in front of Dolibor Dvorsky in terms of power rankings. Because those two definitely have a lot more potential than Dvorsky, in my opinion. But like I said, having him at the ninth spot isn't like bad. It's just the fact that he placed him before Benson, before Leonard. And I'm not too sure about that. And finally, to finish this horrendous top 10 list of the draft we have colby barlow again colby barlow is an excellent player the team that's gonna draft him is gonna have a really really good prospect in their hands and playing in the ohl he got 79 points in 59 games which is really really good but again to have him in front of ryan leonard oliver moore david renbacher even matthew wood gabe perot zach benson is really really not understandable to me i mean come on like he's at the 16th 17th overall spot for most of the mock drafts so to have him in the top 10 man is yeah i don't i don't get it how can you be in the hockey world knowing all those people looking at prospects for all this time i mean he's been a scout in the nhl he's been a gm in the nhl and he, he doesn't like it's pretty obvious like the top 10 this year is pretty obvious and to have all of those like weird players in the top 10 i don't get it man i don't get it anyway let me know what you guys think of this list in the comments below do you guys agree with craig button or do you guys agree with me let me know in the comments subscribe leave a like leave a comment share do anything as you want join the discord the link is in the description and i'll see y'all later for another video have a nice rest of your day and bye bye